Thanks for the much coveted uh, opportunity to speak during the already late coffee break. Uh, so I'll try and do my best to, to maintain your attention and challenge you to think a little bit about uh, the next horizon in colon cancer surgery. So we've been talking tremendous amount about rectal cancer. We're going to shift gears altogether uh, to talk about uh, colon cancer and the new concept, newish concept of complete mesocolic excision. Uh, and is this a step forward in something we should be doing, or is this actually a step backwards? Uh, here are my disclosures. I don't totally know the answer to this, uh, and I certainly have been wrong about a lot of things I've said before, so take all of this with something of a grain of salt. Um, my thinking on this actually uh, got inspired when I got invited to give a lecture uh, at a complete mesocolic uh, excision symposium a couple of years ago. Uh, where uh, the topic was uh, colon cancer 10 years behind the rectum. And the notion was uh, we've made these tremendous strides with rectal cancer surgery as a technical exercise, and we've just missed the boat on colon cancer, and there's a chance to do better. So all of this is really based on the TME analogy. And these are the, uh, the old data uh, coming back into the 1990s uh, when it was reported. On the left is the famous uh, and never cited and never used uh, uh, NCTG uh, trial that looked at uh, post-operative radiation versus post-operative chemo radiation for rectal cancer, uh, which was intended to become the standard therapy because it was a well-done randomized trial by experts, and it showed a significant decrease when you added uh, chemotherapy to radiation therapy after you resected tumors. But the reason why I show that, uh, number one, is to point out even looking at the post-op radiation therapy arm, the local recurrence rate uh, by uh, talented surgeons in them days was 25 percent. And it was presumably higher in patients that just had surgery alone. So the problem with rectal cancer was local recurrence. That was the challenge of the late 20th century for surgeons. Along came Bill Heald, as everybody knows. TME came along without radiation. And instead of all this post-op radiation and chemo radiation, very toxic, he just operated better and got much, much better results with a local recurrence rate of 6%. Here's a nice mesorectum that we're all aspire to get based upon this kind of work. Um, and here are some of the data. These, uh, this is from the CR07 trial. Uh, and what you can see, uh, local re if you do a bad job, uh, which is actually really a bad job. The blue lines in here, you have a much increased local recurrence rate, uh, decreased survival. Uh, a little bit noteworthy is that if you do a fair job, uh, so comparing mesorectal excisions, which is perfect anatomy, like I tried to show you, with intramesorectal, the difference is almost negligible. But the other piece about this, uh, where the CME advocates have really tried to take a page from the TME book, is the idea of mobilizing internationally surgeons uh, to do better, to institute proper training so that surgeons can do proper surgery. And this is a study from uh, Anna Martling at the Karolinska uh, many years ago when they started what they called the TME project and they compared it to their baseline data in the Stockholm radiation trials. And they could see early on that their local recurrence rate uh, was better, uh, survival uh, was better when surgeons were properly trained. So all that is the backdrop to complete mesocolic excision. And here you have the equation, TME, it's like we can take the SATs again, TME is to rectum as CME is to colon. The general principles are precise anatomic resection of the bowel and its mesentery in the embryologic planes. Just like we think in TME, uh, and uh, anatomic proximal vascular, li vascular ligation. Uh, that's a little bit of a loaded term, what that means. CME and central vascular ligation is not actually a brand new concept. Here are some much older studies. Rupert Turnbull in the 1960s when he promoted the no-touch technique, and for those of you that weren't, uh, are not historically aware of that, the notion that you tied the vessels first before manipulating the tumor would let the tumor spread. 
tie off all the, uh, all the veins that were where the cancer was going to go, uh, he uh, found improved results with his no-touch technique. Really what it was was an uh, anatomic high ligation. It was a medial to lateral uh, ligation, uh, just like we do laparoscopically nowadays. And he probably just was doing a, a more complete mesocolic excision than, than the standard was. Uh, Sloan Kettering, Stearns, and Schottenfield uh, said that they did better when they did wider resections. And Les Bouquet, who's still working in Sydney, uh, has become a real advocate about this, saying that the importance of surgical technique cannot be overemphasized. And he sort of got religion one day that he had to go higher and wider, and things came out better. But the seminal paper uh, that advanced the concept of CME to its advocates was this one uh, by uh, Werner Hohenberger uh, in Erlangen. Uh, Professor Hohenberger is a, a remarkable technical surgeon. Everything is extremely anatomic when you go to his operating room. Uh, he does these really beautiful operations you would be proud to do. And what he showed, um, uh, looking at two time periods in his practice, uh, was that he got better that uh, his local recurrence rate went down and his uh, cancer-related survival went up, uh, and he attributed this to CME. He's a very careful technical surgeon. He stayed in the embryo, stays, and well, retired now, stayed in the, end, in the embryologic planes and did high ligations in a very precise way. Uh, and this actually uh, fed people that sort of the uh, advocates of CME who saw this as a potential step forward exactly like TME. So uh, let me just start by saying uh, this is a really interesting uh, paper that came out of uh, Norway uh, seven years ago uh, looking at the anatomic consequences of right colectomy. So they had CT scans on patients who leaked and they looked at their vascular trees and uh, were surprised to see how much of the vasculature actually remained after a right colectomy for cancer. So there's no doubt that inadequate surgery is done, can be done. Uh, here's a patient that I saw at the U. You can see this PET positive node. This patient had had a right hemicolectomy, laparoscopic right hemicolectomy, uh, and they left behind most of the mesentery. And that node is just a plain old mesenteric node that should have been removed. CMA, we've already talked about what that is. So what's the evidence? For CME. Uh, and it's really interesting. This is a paper from uh, uh, Nick West. Uh, he is from Leeds. Um, Phil Quirk, all of you will know, is the pathologist who uh, is famous for looking at rectal cancer specimens, uh, help, has helped promote uh, TME, a colleague of uh, Bill Heald, at least um, uh, psychologically. Uh, even though they work at different institutions. Uh, and what they started doing was this morphometry looking at colon cancer resection specimens and trying to quantitate how good the resection is. And they made up a variety of measures, the distance to the tie, the area of the mesentery, uh, the uh, anatomic completeness of the mesocolon, just like the anatomic completeness of the mesorectum that we all understand, and the lymph node counts. Uh, Leeds was the straw dog here. This is the conventional surgery. Erlangen is Werner Hohenberger. And you can see, based on morphometry, Werner Hohenberger wins hands down in every category. This is another interesting paper from the same group uh, who, interestingly, they decided that Werner had a good thing going and also uh, that in Japan, where they were uh, performing uh, related but different D3 resections of rectal cancers, trying to get higher lymph nodes, higher levels of vascular ligation, and, and looked for a common theme in the resections. And what they found is a complete absence of common theme. So uh, what, they, what they assert in the paper is that these are the two leading technical groups for taking out colon cancer in the world. So these are the gold standards. It's their criteria for that, not totally clear. Uh, but if you compare their specimens using morphometry, they're tremendously different. They both end up with really good results, really good outcomes. But uh, Werner takes longer hunks of bowel, gets more area of his mesocolon, and gets more nodes. So again, you've seen the slide. This is uh, Werner's paper. 
uh, showing his improvement. Um, but look at the dates. Uh, we're talking about his early group, 1978 to 1984. His later group is 95 to 2002. You know, what's happened in all of these years? Is this really Werner getting into the embryologic plane and tying the vessels higher? Well, you know, the quality of surgery may be it. The quality of the pathologic assessment may be it. Maybe that Werner is a more experienced surgeon than he used to be. Maybe his hospital is better at doing cancers. Maybe the leak rate is better. Uh, maybe there are less blood transfusions because he's better. Uh, maybe these patients are just getting chemotherapy. There's a million factors unaccounted for in that very, very influential paper. A secondary issue, just to show you the slide that I've also showed you already, is that local recurrence, the big advance in rectal cancer in the 1990s was decreasing the local recurrence rate. That's what the radiation was aimed at. That's what the TME surgery was aimed at. This was not an issue of distant meds. This is local recurrence issue. And as everybody in the room knows, local recurrence for colon cancer is not 25% after radiation or 35% without radiation. So there's a very tempting target that we had in the days of TME that you don't see in the days of CME. Our local recurrence rates, they're extremely hard to find in the literature. You know, I would say 10% would be a very high number, and you've got to improve on that uh, very substantially uh, to have an impact. Central vascular ligation. So if you, you know, when we do rectal cancer surgery, uh, and we think about high ties taking the IMA or low ties just taking the superior rectal artery, if you look at the data about that, we don't do high ties for oncologic purposes because there's no difference in the outcome. We do high ties so that the left colon will reach the pelvis. So it's hard to show, by and large, when patients have positive nodes right at the root of their IMA, they have a very high risk of distant disease and we can't impact it by taking out those uh, nodes. Okay, so where's the beef for CME? Uh, this is what we know. This is a Danish study from a, quite a good group of Danish surgeons, and what they show is that for patients who have a total mesocolic excision, uh, their survival is uh, better compared to conventional surgery. The problem with this is that this is done by these a group of uh, specialist surgeons who spend their days and nights doing colon cancer and rectal cancer, and they are comparing this to three outlying hospitals where they don't have the expertise and probably not the institutional expertise to do as well. So it's not a randomized trial, and it's probably not a fair comparison. The second issue is that there is actually, this is the same skilled surgeons, significant morbidity when they do CME. So look at this thing, it's really pretty amazing. So the 90-day mortality looks, maybe it's a little different, not statistically significant, but intra-op organ injury, triple, splenic injury, triple, SMV injury, a lot, severe sepsis, double, respiratory failure, double to triple. So it's not for free doing a CME. Uh, this is from Paris Techis. Basically, I think it's pretty good uh, a pretty good uh, summary of what we know. A CME removes more tissue and gets better lymph node clearance, but uh, there's little uh, information. There's some information about adverse events, uh, but long-term survival benefit of this has uh, certainly not yet been proven. So I want to uh, fi finish off uh, just with the most uh, annoying quote in American history, George Santayana. Uh, nobody here, everybody here has been to high school, so everybody has used this quote for a term paper at one point in their career. Um, uh, but let's just take a look at radical mastectomy for a minute. So here we are. This is uh, William Halstead's uh, famous paper uh, showing that if you perform radical surgery for breast cancer, you could get a local recurrence rate of 6% when the contemporaneous local recurrence rate was extremely high. Here it says 50 to 85 percent. Who knows, but it was very, it was a big problem. Local recurrence. Okay. So, first of all, number one, Halstead lied. All the big papers people lie about, all the initial results, wrong. 
Uh, so uh, Lewis and Reinhoff were actually guys from Hopkins. So this was not enemy territory, but they thought, boy, those numbers are awfully good. Uh, and they looked at the series, and here you can see uh, the local recurrence rate was probably over 30%. Uh, there were all these patients that died, almost half. Most of those died from recurrent cancer. Radical mastectomy was not everything it was made out to be. Uh, the idea of that was to do a big wide resection and get all the nodes. Halstead himself recognized this. We shall in the near future remove the mediastinal contents in some of our primary operations. Our rule should be to operate on the neck in every case. Let's get those nodes. Let's get them. Owen Wangenstein, the great Minnesota surgeon, Dr. Wangenstein, today it should be said the Halstead operation for cancer of the breast outmoded is not radical enough. So you came to the University of Minnesota, Dr. Wangenstein, uh, not, uh, he was a courageous surgeon, but not the greatest technician, correct, Dr. Goldberg? Uh, he was a, <laughs> Dr. Goldberg likes to say, rough as a cob. Uh, so uh, here's what you would get. A big vertical incision up your chest into your neck so you could do a radical neck dissection, internal memory node dissection, take off the breast, take off the muscles. We don't do this anymore. Uh, but this whole thing became uh, sort of a surrogate for, uh, dare I say, penis size. Uh, Jerry Urban at Sloan Kettering was that uh, you just, you know, you better be man enough to really do a man's job at surgery. And then comes Bernie Fisher, uh, and he starts a series of randomized trials that show that radical, modified radical mastectomy is every bit as good as radical mastectomy. Lumpectomy with radiation is as good as both of those operations. Nowadays, you have positive lymph nodes in the axilla. You don't, you're not even obligated to take them out. You need to find them to dictate the treatment, but an axillary node dissection in the presence of documented nodes in the armpit does not gain you anything. Progress is not linear in anything that we do, particularly cancer treatment. Think about breast cancer. We went from non-radical resection 150 years ago, 120 years ago, to radical mastectomy, to super radical mastectomy, and then all of a sudden we're climbing down the same pole we just climbed up, down to modified radical, down to lumpectomy uh, with radiation, uh, and back to non-radical resection, which is where we started. So colon cancer, are we 10 years behind the rectum? or are we 30 years behind the breast? George Santayana again, skepticism like chastity should not be relinquished too readily. That's a better quote from him you can use for your next term paper. Uh, and in summary, uh, it is probably true that technically, I'm sure it's true, that tech, technically inadequate colon cancer resections are done, for sure, we see them. On the other hand, we don't know what the optimal resection is. CME with central vascular ligation is analogous uh, to TME surgery. It does produce better specimens, but better specimens don't necessarily produce better outcomes. There is some evidence that it may be better, but hardly definitive evidence. Uh, and for now, before you start mucking around with the head of the pancreas, and skeletonizing the SMV in a way that you're not used to and figuring out how you're going to control the, uh, uh, the gastrocolic stump that's bleeding with your laparoscope there and the sucker going full bore, just do good surgery and watch for further developments. Thank you very much.